Hey folks, if you haven't been here before, welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. Uh, glad to have you. Uh, this is the Ask Sabado channel, and, and, and uh, on the Ask Sabado channel, uh, it's pretty simple. We I'm, I retired at 51 years old, and this is me really just telling you my story in different pieces and parcels, and hopefully in ways that make sense, because I believe that my journey resonates with me 100%, but will only resonate with others, you know, to a small degree because it's other people are on different paths. But I do think that a lot of our paths are connected and that we can learn from from each other. And so that's my my goal here is really nothing else but to uh, give you a little bit of, of information based on, on the journey that I have. But we'll, we'll get to uh, introducing the channel in a minute. Uh, today, I want to talk, you know, talk to you a little bit about just some revelations that I've made nine months into my uh, early retirement journey. You know, I think that, um, you know, when you when you retire or when you're about to retire, or when you're about to do anything these days, you know, the first thing you do is you go to the source of truth for everything, which is YouTube. And uh, when you go to YouTube, there's a lot of folks that are going to tell you, here's what you have to do. Here's how much you have to save. Basically, here's how you have to move in order to get yourself prepared to get to early retirement. And the fact of the matter is, is that um, everybody's journey is a little bit different. And so instead of trying to uh, tell people what to do, I, I really focus on uh, what I call the wisdom of the universe. You know, it's, it's funny because I, I'm not really a religious individual. But I do believe that everything that happens in the world that is connected to everything else that ever happens in the world. And so everything that's happening today is a result of every other thing that's ever happened in the world. And anything that happens going forward will be the result of everything that's happening in these moments. And so um, and so I think that some, there must be some pieces of my journey that may connect to, to what other people, what other folks do. Um, and, and I try to stay away from what I call the, uh, the social media generation or the Instagram generation, because I, I think where we've, where we've gotten to now with a lot of things is that because we have such good access to information and such in the moment access to information, um, that a lot of our information focuses on the outcome. And so social media uh, gives an gives a outcome of what's supposed to happen or, or, or what specific behaviors uh, yielded. Um, or it, it, it shows other people's opinions on things that have already happened. And so what I'm, what I'm trying to do with this channel is, is help under, help you just learn from my raw experiences. Um, I have notes here. If you couldn't tell, I, I keep some notes just to stay on track a little bit. But it's really about those notes are just to keep me on track because the idea is to help you learn from my experiences. Um, a lot of you look at um, things like early retirement or, or things that we just quote unquote deemed as being successful as being things that are outside of our reach, things that we can't do. And, you know, I'm a guy from um, Northern California. Uh, I grew up in a part of my town that was a little rougher than, than other parts of town. Um, we had a 50% dropout rate. Uh, going to college in my neighborhood was a good thing. Nobody's ever talked to us about financial literacy. Uh, and during our, our job fairs, the only people that we had in our um, job fairs were, were police officers trying to tell us, uh, you know, don't do drugs, don't go to jail. And we had uh, army um, recruiters that would come in and try to get us to join the army, like Sergeant Williams. Hey, man, when are you going to join the army, man? And so I knew uh, being six foot eight, I wasn't going to embark on a life of crime. But I also learned uh, in very short order after going to an army recruiter's office that I wasn't necessarily built for getting up at five o'clock in the morning every morning and going to run five miles every day uh, during boot camp. So I didn't do either of the two. And I took what I thought was the, the path of least resistance, which was finishing school, which seemed difficult. And then I got hurt playing basketball. And, and there's a bunch of stuff around that. All that to say that when I retired, I wanted to, to develop a channel that basically said, um, you know, people that look like me and I suspect people that look like us, whether you're 
you're African American, Asian, uh, Latin, Latinx, um, gay, straight, um, live in the East Coast, West Coast, uh, whether you've immigrated to the country or you're born as a United States citizen, that we can all find our share of the retirement picture uh, if we go about it the right way. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting because I, when I started this journey um, oh, some time back, and you can go back through my videos and see when I started, but when I, when I started the channel, it's, it's, again, the source of truth is, is social media, is YouTube. So I go on YouTube, and what I didn't see, I didn't see a lot of people on YouTube that looked like me that we're talking about early retirement. And, you know, there's people that say, well, why is that important? And I, I, I say for the simple fact that there were specific structural obstacles that were put in front of people of color and women and immigrants and others. And you can define others however you define others that uh, made it difficult to obtain uh, the wealth or the money necessary to even get a down payment on a house or to live in a desirable part of town or to even get a job and, and be treated fairly or to be able to keep a job. So there were some very specific things that were there. So I, so I, I thought to myself that, you know, I'm not going to come on to YouTube and try to be some guru uh, because that just wouldn't be me. And I'm all about uh, keeping it real. Anybody that knows me, uh, whether it's on YouTube and my personal circles or even my post my past professional circles know that the one thing that I try to do is I try to keep it real 100% of the time I, I'm not going to give anybody any BS I don't have time for it um, and whatever you get from me is stuff that's that's verified that I believe to be true and if it's incorrect and please let me know in the comments because I have a mantra of always wanting to give um, correct information um, but there was nobody on the channel that that looked like me um that was that was doing the same thing that I was doing. I mean, we had there were some financial advisors and there were some people in that space, but nobody from the space of, hey, look, I'm just an underrepresented person that's telling you my journey to get to early retirement. And, you know, because I was able to do it, then you're probably gonna be able to do it too. And and look, I understand that the factors that, that prevent people from being able to retire are real. Uh, the factors that prevent anybody from being able to do anything um, are real. Um, and I can't, this channel is not going to be able to overcome all of those. But it's my hope that at least I give you some, um, I give some of you some hope that you can, uh, you know, do the things necessary to get yourself to the point where, you know, you're basically living your best life. Um, and, I, and I say living your best life. I hate cliches. That's another thing you'll, you'll probably learn about me. But I, uh, I say living your best life because I've, I'm very clear on the fact that retirement is really out of hand for some individuals, for a lot of people, and that a very small percentage of people retire early and that an even smaller uh, percentage of people that look like me, African-American people, um, retire early. And so I, I so it's not always about getting out of the workforce and just going and playing golf and drinking tea all day. Sometimes it's about just living your best life and having the right perspective and realizing that you're OK, that you do matter, that your thoughts are valid and that there's somebody else in the world that understands what you're thinking. And so that's that's really the genesis of this channel is just to be, you know, we're all in this together. We're all uh, one nation under a groove. And we all have the same sets of challenges. And, and some of us just may have gotten a little bit luckier, a little bit fortunate in some places and others as we as we went through the journey. And, you know, I think it's it's our obligation to, you know, help each other if we have the opportunity to help each other uh, move forward uh, down that path. And so that's uh, that's so that's a little bit about about this channel for you, um, by you with stuff that is hopefully helpful and I, and I hope that you do find this, this stuff, uh, this stuff that we talk about helpful, um, regardless of the stage, whether you're thinking about retirement or just saving up, whether you're on the, on the precipice of early retirement or retiring at all, or if you've already retired, um, because there's a whole host of people that have already retired 
that are still dealing with some of the stuff that we talk about on the channel. And so, um, so on that note, that's enough about the channel. That's enough about me. Uh, let's talk about some revelations that I've had. And again, I've had four major revelations uh, since I retired. But the fifth one is actually kind of a bonus. So I, I just stay to the end for that one because I think you'll it'll, you'll get a kick out of that one. So um, so after about nine months, I, I retired in September of last year. And so it's been about nine months, almost 10 months uh, that I've been retired and, and really uh, living my best life, doing what I want to do. Some days not doing anything um, and just really enjoying it. But after about that seventh or eighth month, I, I, I realized that I really started to hit this, uh, like this adjustment period. And so the, the first revelation I have is that you, you, you hit an adjustment period. And, and what that adjustment period is, is there's the, there's the initial excitement when you, uh, when you retire. And then there's a point where being retired is just the way that you live. And it's, it's funny because I, I liken it to, uh, and I've been talking about this a lot uh, lately, um, I liken it to somebody being in debt. If somebody gets a, uh, I don't know, a bonus at work, or they get a salary raise, or they get a, uh, I don't know, um, tax refund, and you get that money and you're in debt, then what happens whenever you get those, you're always using those to pay off the debt. So you never really have the ability to truly appreciate the money that comes in or the money that flash of money because you're like, oh, now I can pay my visa bill. Oh, now I can pay my American Express bill. Now I can do this. I can do that. I can pay my water bill. And then, but the, there's a point where, um, you know, they talk in financial circles about uh, diminishing returns. Well, there's, there's a point where you hit an inflection point where, okay, you've gotten enough of those to where you've paid off the bills and then you have the money to do what it is that you that you really want to do with it. Well, that's the same thing that happens when you retire early. Um, you know, I, I know that many of you are looking at retiring early and saying, man, it'd be great to wake up and not have to do anything. But is it though? Is it really that great? Is it great to have all your friends still working? Is it great to not necessarily have something to do during the day? Is, is it really that great? And so what you do during this time is you start getting past all the initial stuff, or at least for me, I've gotten past all of that initial excitement of not working and just filling my time with a bunch of unnecessary stuff and really started looking at, you know, what is my routine? And fortunately, I've gone right into a routine where, you know, I wake up and, anywhere from about 7.30 to about 9. Then I'll, I'll get up, and a lot of times I'll get up and exercise or I'll go play golf, uh, which I think is a great form of exercise because I'm out walking six miles. Um, and then I'll go run my errands for the day, and those errands can be going to the grocery store. They can be dropping off eBay packages. They can be doing a whole host of things, going to doctor's appointments, um, just whatever it is. And I'll, I'll do those things, and my goal every single day is to be home no later than five o'clock because at that point that's when my wife and I start cooking dinner we start watching tv <laughs> excuse me we start to hang out a little bit and so the rest of that time is our time because again I only have three priorities in my retirement and that's my health my relationship with my wife and my time so anything that is in conflict with any of those I've got a problem with them and time, you know, taking the time to do other things and spend time with my wife. Well, I, I didn't retire to be by myself. I retired to be with her. And so, you know, so it's, it's, but finding that during this adjustment period, finding that and understand that this is what my routine is. Now there may be ways that I go about filling my routine and I may change the way I feel it. But I think sometimes when we start to feel angst, we, we feel anxiety about the fact that we feel anxious, but we don't necessarily always think about what we're feeling anxious about and understanding that feeling anxious in and of itself is part of the process. And so, um, and so now it's just a matter of, you know, looking at the additional free time and then finding how do I manage that the rest of that surplus? Because I, I trust me, I don't have six hours, five, six hours a day worth of errands. Some days they go longer than others. Um, but again, it's, there's, 
you know, I, I'm now I've realized that I'm now in that in that adjustment period. Uh, number two, it, our, our, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with this new uh, identity and purpose. It's it's funny. I, uh, I had the opportunity to golf with an individual that I used to work with. Uh, he was a vendor of ours, but he and I became really good friends uh, over time. So we had the opportunity to go golf just a couple weeks ago. And I was having a conversation with him, and it's it's just interesting because there's this whole body of life that goes on around the the job that I just left, and there's all the toxicity that sits behind that that others are starting to experience now and tell me about. And you know, and these are all things that I'm no longer involved with. You know, you can tell me about what happened in my last job, but do I really care? Nah. But they had some they had a bunch of layoffs and somebody called me and said, hey, they're having a bunch of layoffs. And I said, well, it's not my problem. They should have listened to me when I when they had the opportunity to. But at, at this point, I can't. You know, they, they took advantage of me and, and I left there on good terms and did everything I said I was going to do. And that's that's kind of where it is. But that's not who I am anymore. I'm not the guy that gets up and, and powers through and gets a bunch of work stuff done. I'm not the one that's that's solving the world's problems anymore. I'm not the one on the road uh, delivering leadership seminars anymore. I don't do that. So now I'm kind of grappling with this. You know, I'm I'm basically Chuck Chill Out. You know, I just call me Chuck Chill Out, and um, you know, thinking about you know who I am and and what are those things in life that that really give life meaning. What's what's it about? You know, I I, I like to say you know you don't work to live. Um, so you don't live to work, you work to live. And the fact of the matter is, though, is that most of us, you know, if you took if you took 10 hours out of your day and said you could do whatever you want, that might work for a little while. But, you know, it's just like people when you think about the last time you went on a long vacation, you know, you're gone for 10 days or whatever. The, the time is two weeks. What's the first thing you're saying to yourself at the end of that two weeks? I can't wait to get back to work. And so, you know, that when, when a person makes that statement, what they're really saying is that there are very few other things outside of work that give my life meaning. And so when you force feed yourself into the situation where you have to, where you're not working, you now have to think about that. So I found myself thinking about, you know, what, what is the meaning of life? What, what's, a, what's really important? Is it important that I, uh, it's, it's certainly not important that I make a bunch of money or that I have a bunch of things. And I, I think, you know, Susie Orman said it best. She says, you know, people, then money, then things. And and really looking at the the relationships that I have and, and the people that I put myself around, because a, a lot of the outcomes or the, the positioning or the way you feel about the world really comes from the people that you put yourself around. And if you put yourself around people who aren't concerned with your well-being, you're going to find yourself in a difficult, difficult situation, you know, and, and another thing that I'm, I'm taking a look at is just, you know, trying to get into some lifelong learning types of things. I, I think in, in one video I mentioned some time back that I love gardening. Gardening is my thing. That's kind of what I do. And so part of um, the evolution of my gardening is going into the um, to the master gardener program. So one of the universities here has a master gardener program. So I can learn more about gardening on the other side of, you know, the scientific side of, of gardening, as opposed to just putting seeds in, watering them, forgetting about them and hoping that they work out, which is, trust me, been faring well. Uh, you can ask cucumbers that I just harvested a couple days ago and the tomatoes I harvested a couple days ago. Um, the beans that I've been harvesting since the beginning of the year, the corn that's growing, the watermelon that's growing, the sunflowers that are growing. I mean, I, I could go on forever and I won't, I won't subject you to that because I love gardening about as much as I love putting together this content for you on this, on this YouTube channel. So, but again, I'm, I've been focusing on really just helping to rebuild my sense of purpose, who I am, what I'm about. And so when you say, hey, there's Sabado, it's not, oh, it's just Sabado, the guy with the YouTube, he's some guy with the YouTube channel. He's Sabado and he's a gardener. He's a golfer. He's a, a guy that loves his family. He's a, he's a good friend. He's whatever, you know, whatever the, the operative thing is that you, that you want to say about me. And hopefully it's nice, um, particularly if you're in my face. But that's another conversation. 
Um, number three, uh, you know, really looking at health and wellness differently. You know, when I was working, you know, it's it's funny because a lot of us, we get into this grind and all we're trying to do is we're trying to maintain ourselves so we can make it in the next day and not use up all of our sick time. And I'll tell you, I was working in an office before and uh, in the last place I went and I, I realized that all the people I worked with, all the people on my team, they used to eat really, really well. And I mean, when I say they eat well, they get DoorDash every day, they'd order DoorDash for breakfast, they get lunch, they have... Then they go home and cook these really rich dinners and all that. And, you know, a lot of them had a bunch of medical problems. And I knew they had medical problems because as the leader of the department, I knew um, that when things were happening, because they would all have to flow through me, just even if they're applying for a leave or, or something like that. But I've had some people confide in me as well, and I'm, I'm not going to um, take that for granted but uh, or violate that. But when you when you think about how a lot of these happen, it, it comes from eating. So they're in an office for 10 hours a day. Um, they're they're eating at their desk. And I didn't I didn't promote this. I was the guy that came and said, you got to have balance. You got to have balance. You got to have balance. But they weren't doing that. And so now they have all these health problems. So you've got some with heart issues and diabetes types of issues and um, you know, different types of cancers and things like that, that all came about because they weren't taking care of themselves. And so, you know, when you, when you don't uh, make a concerted effort to focus on your health and wellness, and this is both your physical well-being and your mental well-being, because again, I think both are connected in very real ways. Um, there's some real outcomes for that. And when you have the opportunity and you're fortunate enough to be in a situation where you don't have to go into work every day and you don't have to deal with, a bunch of, um, you know, unnecessariness, you know, you want your health to be on point because if somebody says, Hey, let's go kayaking. You want to be ready to get out there and be Johnny on the spot. Um, but you can't always do that. And so, you know, so I, so I really try to focus on my, and, and I'm really understand the importance of my physical and mental health. Um, you know, as an example, you know, I, I exercise at least 150 minutes a week and that's just the CDC guidelines. That's 30 minutes a day, five days a week of, of moderate exercise. So I try to do at least that on my exercise bike. Uh, I think I mentioned on Tuesdays, I have a buddy that I go walk with. So we usually walk a few miles. I go golfing a couple times a week. I'm not going this week, but, uh, a couple times a week. And so that's another six miles, but I, I try to do that. And then, you know, I, the other thing I, I think about a lot, and I've probably always internalized these, but, and, and I would say internalizing it isn't the same as thinking about it. Again, I'm not a, I'm not a psychiatrist, never played one on TV. If there's anybody that knows anything about this kind of stuff, please mention it in the comments, because I, I think if this can help anybody else, then I think that's what it's all about. But, you know, now I take the time to think about, you know, all of my social interactions, like the quality and quantity of them. Um, you know, as an example, um, my wife's best friend has a, uh, has a golf tournament, um, this year, or I'm sorry, this, this weekend. And, you know, I'm always invited to play and I'm not going to play. And, you know, there's a couple of reasons I'm not going to play, but, but one of them is, is it's just too much interaction. It's too much for me because the more I take in from what's going on with other people, that's the more that I carry. And the more that I carry, the more I take away from the, from the rest of, rest of my existence. And so I've, I've been very clear to set boundaries with myself. So I'm not going to play in the tournament. Um, you know, you think about, you know, there's a lot of people at the tournament that for a long time I say, oh, these are friends, friends, friends. But I, I've been doing a little bit of an experiment, and, uh, and and what I've been doing is I've been taking a look at people that are on the uh, that are kind of on the on the cusp of of friendship, if you will, and I've been um, I'll call them and they say I'll call you back. All right, then I won't call them back, and if I don't hear from them for a month, then. I take them, I delete their number from my phone and I don't call them and I don't have any other social media except the social media tied to this. And so if I don't hear from them, then how close of a friend uh, am I with those individuals? So then the question becomes, do I spend time on that? It doesn't mean they're bad people and it doesn't mean I don't, I don't like the folks. It's just when I think about how I'm going to spend my time, I'm not going to spend my time with folks that 
that aren't going to call me back. I'm going to spend my time with people who are actively engaged in the interaction because at this point in a, of my life, it really comes down to the quality of all of the interactions that I have and who has time for interactions that are, that are less than positive. And then, you know, the, the other thing around my, my health and wellness that I think is really important is, is diving into my hobbies and interests. Um, you know, one of the things that my, my wife really loved about me when we met years ago was that I was always so excited about stuff. There was, I always had a zest for life, learning new things, trying different things, stepping outside of the box, um, trying to experience things that people may have told me that people that look like me don't do. And all of those things worked out, um, you know, and, and so now it's, you know, golf and, you know, playing the piano, um, the, this YouTube channel. I mean, I, I think this YouTube channel, um, I, I don't know if I ever told you, but when I was, um, running learning and development for, for an organization and traveling around the country in the United States, Mexico, Canada, and Puerto Rico. Um, I love that because I was able to help people get to where it is that they wanted to be based on stuff that I knew. And so this YouTube channel gives me an opportunity to do that. You know, again, I don't have all of the information and I, I'm not even the most articulate individual on, on many of these topics because there's topics, these rivers run really deep. But the one thing I am an expert in is my experience and, and what I've experienced and telling the truth. And so I'm using this as my platform to tell you the truth about retiring. I, it's, it's that simple. Um, and I, it's, it's just, and I wouldn't have had the time to do this as well as it's been going had I still had to go in and, and work um, 10 hours a day, five days a week. And I say 10 hours because it could go 10, it could go longer. Um, you know, one of the other revelations that um, that I had or one of the other major areas of focus, uh, and this is number four, is uh, are my relationships. Um, you know, I have time to not just be in relationships with people, but to really think about the relationships that I have with people. You know, a lot of go back and take a look. I'd be interested. Let me know in the comments where you sit with this. But, you know, a lot of people um, are in our lives um, by default. And, and what I mean by that is, is that we just happen to bump into and we happen to meet them. They fit this time slot. That's a time slot that's open on a regular basis. And so they're OK for us to spend time with them. But how much are you really getting to know some of these individuals? And so then what, what used to happen to me was I meet people and I have these really high expectations and not because I want them to operate a certain way, but because I tend to find the good in just about everybody. And so what ends up happening is because I focus on the good and I'm not thinking about what it is that they're doing, at some place down the line, they'll do something or they'll do a few things that then are side that get sideways with me. And then that becomes a problem and I get frustrated with myself because I should have known that something I should have picked up. It was something pretty rudimentary that I didn't, uh, that I didn't pick up. And, um, you know, the, and, and now I have the opportunity and I've, I've spent a lot of time doing that and, you know, really looking at which of those relationships are healthy for me and which ones aren't, you know, it's when I, when I left my last job, I had this idea that there were going to be some individuals there that I was going to stay close to. And I was like, yeah, I got along with this person, got along with this person. We got along here, there and so on. Then I just realized that because they were all in that environment and there were little things that would happen that, you know, the old Sabado would say, oh, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. We'll just work through it. But there were things that would happen that were just you would ask yourself the question, why would somebody do that? And so I said, you know, I can continue my life and try to figure it out and try to save this person and change this person's behavior. Or I could just move forward. <laughs> and that's what I did is I just moved forward. Um, you know, and again, there's there's a couple of people that I've picked up along the way that I'm, I'm really good friends with now. But uh, but, you know, the, the upshot of that is that then for my actual, for people that I am friends with, I actually have more time for them. I have more time to spend with those people that I've been fostering strong relationships with and that we've been taking time over periods of time to get to know each other. And so I'm able to have richer and, and more robust uh, friendships. And so, you know, you start to see um, that, you know, 
this whole thing of retirement, you know, when you get nine months in, it starts to get normal. You start to look at things different. You know, even with some of the relationships, you know, some have gotten stronger, but, you know, on the other side, some have gone away. And it's not because they're bad people. It's just they just floated away. And I don't feel the need to try to hold on to it because, again, it's taken away from from my time. Um, And so now I have one bonus. So those are the four core, but I have one bonus. and, And I call this one, you know, the one thing I never do. And, you know, it's it's kind of obvious, but I think it's funny is, you know, with all of these things and, and you could call them challenges if you like, you know, in terms of uh, dealing with relationships and health and wellness and and all of these different uh, iterations. But the thing I never consider doing is I never consider going back to work, you know, it, as difficult as any of these uh, things that I describe might be, um, I absolutely uh, don't consider, um, you know, saying forget about it. I'm lonely and I, I can't go and, and and do this anymore. I need to go get a job. And it's funny because I started to think about that when as I was putting together uh, my thoughts for this episode. I, I started to ask, you know, do, do I ever think about, you know, just saying forget about it. It's too hard. And being by yourself most of the time is too difficult. Your friends being at work during the day, well, why don't you go? And and you know, the reality is is I'm not I'm not sitting back in the in the back room wishing I had more money. I'm not involved in a bunch of things that I don't like. And, you know, I'm not incredibly lonely. Uh, because again, my retirement plan did not uh, did not rely on me interacting in any way with certain people. It was really more around just living, uh, living my best life. And then I had to ask myself, you know, when I was working, was I living my best life when I was working? Sure. I was making good money. I could buy some things that I want, but was it, but what about all the other stuff I want to do? What about the times that I couldn't go golfing because I had a meeting or those times that I couldn't go to, you know, I couldn't have breakfast with a friend because I had to be in the office or, you know, whatever that, whatever those things are. And so, you know, so do I ever consider going back to work? I said, no, now, now I'll say that with a caveat. If there were some set of catastrophic circumstances that said, all right, so you got to go back to work, bro, because it's, uh, you know, times are tough and, you know, the world's going to explode. And of course I do it. It's a no brainer. But the fact is that's, that's just not the case. And so, um, so I know, so the answer to the question is, uh, no, I have not, um, considered going back to work, um, because of any of these things, I would rather, I would rather be in a place that's unfamiliar and know that figuring it out is going to put me in a better place on the other end then going back to something I know is going to create frustration with the politics and the drama and the toxicity and some environments and all of those different types of things. And, you know, the fact that, you know, I, I'm back, I would be back to a place where I'm building relationships that perhaps aren't the most genuine relationships because people want something from you. And particularly when you're in an executive level role, most of the people that you interact with are around you. Uh, because they perceive you as having something that could benefit them, not because of anything about you. So again, I just, so when I, so I, I so do I think about it? No, but I, I, I did think it was important though. Um, just kind of in closing to, uh, share with you some of the, some of the revelations that I've been having over these last nine months, because I, I know I, I put up a lot of content and, um, you know, some of the content, it's just a personal journey. Some is just stuff that was educational stuff that I learned that I want to share with you. Uh, but I, I, I figured today I wanted to just sit down and just kind of give it to you brass tacks and say, here's kind of where it's at. You know, there's is, is retirement a, uh, uh, an adjustment? hundred percent. Is it different than what I'm used to? You better believe it. Uh, is it bad? No, it's great. It's great. I wake up every day, do what I want to do. Some days I don't want to do anything. And sometimes I just sit and think, man, today's actually Tuesday or today's Wednesday. And, you know, or I get to the weekends and don't feel like I have to exert myself any further because it's uh, because, again, the weekends don't mean what the weekends uh, used to be. So 
that's about all I have. But I do want to close with, you know, if you if you did like any of this um, content, um, you know, I, I have a bunch of videos up and I they're all about um, early retirement or just living your best life. And I encourage you to, uh, you know, take a look at some of those videos and, and let me know what your thoughts are. And, you know, if you and if you'd like to, you know, get new uh, updates on new videos as they come out, you know, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, there is, I put new content up uh, multiple times a week. You know, I've tried to put myself on a schedule with these types of long form videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Uh, but I put short uh, videos up all the time. So you'll, you'll constantly see me if you're, if you're out there looking and you'll be the first to know about it. So, um, on that note, you know, I, I hope you found this helpful and, uh, I look forward to talking to you soon and have a good rest of your day.